<coughs> my conductor is again here. But now I will be having a conductor of a some finite length. Why? Why, why should my conductor should be having a finite length? Because again we have studied one another formula e is also equals to B L V sin theta. B L V sin theta we have studied in Class also. What is that? B is the flux density I am having a flux we know that I am having a flux from here to here I am having a flux from here to here L is the length of the conductor this length Length of the conductor, like this pen. My conductor is moving in this direction between the poles. V is the velocity by which my conductor is moving in the magnetic field. L is what? L is length. Length of my conductor. So I can say that there is a significance of the length. How? Since E is directly proportional to the flux density, but here, since I am talking about north and south pole, already north and south pole are fixed, so B will be fixed. Means phi is fixed, so B will be fixed. B is fixed. Now coming to the length of the conductor. Emf generator is directly proportional to the length of the conductor. So more will be the length, more will be the Emf generator. Coming to V, V is the velocity by which my conductor is moving in the magnetic field. More with the velocity, more will be the Emf generator. So I should be having a Finite velocity, I should be having a finite length to have this EMF generated. Now, coming to the close picture, previously what we discussed about was a DC generator. Again, I can discuss that. From a single conductor, This is the length of my conductor at the same time since I am having a, a rotor which is a round shape so I will be having different conductors over here I can have different conductors but right now I am talking about two conductors only so these are the two conductors which is A a dash B B dash and they are internally connected here they are internally connected here and they are connected to a two end rings here these two end rings are having I put end rings by blue color so that they will be distinctions from the I am having two end rings which are having two brushes right now and by these brushes my external load L is connected. Now again my conductors are moving clockwise suppose. What will happen? According to Fleming's right hand rule, what will happen if my 
middle finger is pointing towards if my middle finger is pointing towards the force my index finger is pointing towards the b which is b this b and <coughs> my thumb is pointing towards the current so the direction of the current would be here my force would be like this this is my force this is sorry this is f this is b this is i f b i so the direction of the current here would be downwards but of this here the current, direction of the current would be <coughs> upwards so i am having a current flowing in this the current will be coming from here will be coming out from this brush b1 going into b2 through a node and will be so my current is now flowing my current has started flowing so i got a generator again if i closely look at that position this is my position a this is my position b this is c and this is d again <coughs> if i have something suppose this is the position of my conductor right now this way my this this part is one conductor side this is another bb dash conductor now it started moving so my both the conductors a a dash and bb dash are now out of the flux so there will not be any emf generated again now bb will be in the in the north zone and s a a will be in the south zone again this this process will happen so what will happen i will get this a b c d a again this way i will be getting the emf generator so this is called as a generator only ac generator to have the dc generator what i will do rather than using two slip rings i will put a single slip ring splitted here and the brushes will be connected over here and my external circuit will be here it will be like this and the brushes will be having output load connected and these will be touching these lines now what will happen when this is brush b1 this is brush b2 now these are called the split rings right now now again coming back to that thing if i am having a conductor suppose this is my this part this part is my a a conductor and this is my b b dash conductor this is my a a dash conductor this is my b b dash conductor the blue one are the a a dash conductor and the red one line red line is the b b dash conductor here yeah. so now started moving now they both the conductors are not cutting the uh, 
lines of forces, so there will not be any uh, you are generated. Now, this has turned now. So, when it was in this position, so there was a maximum unit generated at point A. So, from A to B, it was the same way. The EMF was there. Now, from point B to C, what will happen? This will be coming into the negative direction and this will be coming into the positive direction. So, the direction of the current here would be always be same. Here, from this, I can see that the direction of the current would always be the same. So, the direction of the EMF would always be same. So, when I put the slip frame, the B and D position will be B will come over here and from B again B to C I will get a EMF in the same direction and from B to D I will be having sorry C to D I will be having the same coming down and from D to A again I will get this will form this way then this, then this, then this. I will not get this here. So, after putting just a small apparatus, which is called the commutator. Now, this is called as a commutator. After putting just the same ring split into two parts, my brush is all on the same way, previously way. I got this. So, this commutator is used for converting a AC circuit, AC uh, voltage or AC to DC, direct current. So, I am getting a direct current now. Now, this has become a DC generator.